or the key to it. We came to Aomori City, Aomori Prefecture in northeastern Japan. Hi, I'm Michelle. Are you familiar with freeze drying? It's a method to dry food while keeping the nutrients almost intact. Today I'm going to meet a Takumi innovator who takes the technology to a whole new stage. Let's go meet him. Hello. Hi. I'm Michelle Yamamoto. I'm Akitaya. Welcome. Today's Takumi is Nobuyuki Akitaya. We went right in to see his innovative product. Is this it? Yes, it is. What is it? The freeze-dried product looks a lot like gravel. What could it be? Adding water will return it to its original state. Here we go. Mmm, it smells really good. Is this miso? Yes, that's right. It's freeze-dried miso in granulated form that retains its original flavor and aroma. Miso is a traditional Japanese seasoning that is produced by fermenting soybeans. The most popular way to use miso is in a soup. First, a broth is made with kelp or fish, and various ingredients are added to it. Finally, the miso paste is mixed in. It's a very simple dish, but it takes time to prepare it well. On the other hand, with freeze-dried miso, you just have to place it in a bowl and pour hot water over it. It takes just 10 seconds to prepare. And when we compared its taste to that of normal miso, there's no difference. The aroma hasn't changed either. They're exactly the same. This is impressive. Oh, thank you. It retains its rich taste and aroma, and there's no indication that it's been freeze-dried. The freeze-dried miso is produced by a well-established miso maker. It was developed to promote miso. However, it was not an easy task. Freeze drying is a technique used to dry food ingredients in a vacuum tank at a temperature below the freezing point. Yet, the miso took a long time to dry. Here's a graph. As you can see, it took about 20 hours to dry. And a problem arose during the drying process. The amino acid and glucose in miso would bond together. Because of this, the freeze-dried miso didn't taste good. After much thought, the Takumi added a new device to the vacuum tank. It was a cylinder to push out the miso. As you can see, it looks a lot like spaghetti. The miso is then cut into very small pieces by a high-speed cutter before it enters the vacuum tank. The Takumi's idea was to shorten the drying time by cutting it into small pieces and increasing the surface area. However, the miso didn't come out neatly at first. Because there was too much moisture, the miso that he placed in the cylinder would get stuck. The Takumi then thought of pre-drawing the miso. But determining the degree to which the miso should be dried took a lot of experimentation. This is the condition that the Takumi found to be ideal. It appears to be dry and has little stickiness. However, we weren't told the details as they are a trade secret. By incorporating these methods, 
he was able to reduce the drying time to eight hours, which is less than half the time it used to take. By shortening the time during which the flavor and aroma changed, they were able to preserve the miso's quality. We asked the Takumi for the secret to his success. Of course, there were times when things went wrong, but part of success is being able to see those times as valuable experiences rather than failures. You just have to persist until you succeed. I brought the Takumi's freeze-dried miso to the studio. All you need to do now is add hot water. Please try it. Okay, here we go, Dr. Mizushima. Mm, it seems to melt right away. Mm -hmm. And you should mix it well. Can you smell the aroma? Mm, mm. It smells very good. Mm hmm. Mm, this is very nice. It's my mother's miso soup. Great. Really? <laughs> okay, I'm going to have some too. Mm. You know, I've had freeze-dried miso soup before, but this is really tasty. And because it has a long shelf life, I think it would be great for stocking it up for natural disasters. Great idea. And the Takumi's miso can also be used as a seasoning. Although miso consumption is slowly declining in Japan, the Takumi believes that a good idea and high-quality product will attract consumers. Adaptability and diversity are important factors in manufacturing. Although they are a long-standing company, they are working to stay relevant and create new innovations. Thank you very much, Michelle. So, Dr. Mizushima, going back to today's topic on space elevators, how would you wrap it up? New technologies will be needed, and it will be a very complex project. Yet, many researchers and technicians are working to make the concept of a space elevator a reality. Giving mankind a dream is one of science's roles, and I personally hope that it will be made very soon. I look forward to seeing how a space elevator will change our lives and the new worlds that it will open up to us. That's all for this week's Science View. See you next time.